manifesting like heartburn. That's it. But the root of it is unresolved pain. Yes. And I want to show you a reason why pain is hitting people like it is. If you would, go with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29. I feel God in here real strong. Amen. Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. Glory to God. Glory to you. We have Genesis 29. Say, I got it. I got it. If you don't say, hold up, preacher. Wait a minute. I'm telling you, hurry up. <laughs> If you don't mind standing for me in respect to the reading of the word of God, if you can't stand, I understand. Have your seat. My sweeties, I know they have to sit down. Y'all are fine. I'm talking about everybody else that can stand. Amen. 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 Genesis chapter 29, verse number 31. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Rubian. For she said, surely the Lord has looked upon my affliction. Now for, therefore my husband will love me. As she conceived again and bare a son and said, because the Lord has heard, I was hated. He has therefore given me this son also. So she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now this time will my husband be joined unto me. Because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. So far the text. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. Bless the simple witness. Charge it with your power. To wit, people may be saved, healed, and delivered. Anoint your servant. Take my mind, my mouth, and everything I have. Use it with full power. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seeing it really quickly. I want to talk about the hate has made me useful. The hate has made me useful. Look at someone and tell them the hate has made me useful. Well, I can't hear nobody talking. Say it one more time. The hate has made me useful. We've been talking about what's love got to do with it this month. We've been a lot of time talking about love. Relationships are one of the most important things you would ever have. But sometimes relationships have problems. It doesn't mean that the relationship shouldn't be together, but relationships, regardless of family, personal, romantic, are going to have challenges. Can I get a witness? That oh, yes. all relationships have challenges. That's a part of it. And no relationship in the Bible demonstrates the challenges in relationships like Jacob and his wives. We see Jacob mentioned uh, 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 and with his wives in Genesis chapter 29. Jacob has to leave his hometown because he has stolen the birthright from his brother. And his mother says, now you must go and live uh, with my brother yes. Laban. Live there, stay there, until things quiet down here with your brother Esau. So Jacob goes and he lives with his, uh, uh, his uncle Laban. And while he's there, he falls in love with Laban's daughter, Rachel. He says, ah, I must do anything I can to have this woman. I want her to be my wife. Yes. And Laban says, yes, she will be your wife. He works for her. And on the wedding night, Laban flipped the script on him. And instead of giving him uh, Rachel, he gave him his oldest daughter, Leah. Now, Rachel was gorgeous. She was beautiful out of this world, what we would call a bombshell. Uh, but Leah was not as pretty as Rachel. The Bible says she was weak-eyed, which means she was cock-eyed. Uh, uh, she was not as pretty as Rachel. Uh, Jacob wanted Rachel. He didn't want Leah. He liked Rachel. He didn't like Leah. He was yeah. in love with Rachel. He was not in love with Leah. Yet, on the wedding night, he consummates the marriage only to wake up in the morning and find that it was not Rachel in the tent. It was Leah in the tent. The brother was angry. He says, how can you treat me in this way? How can you do this to me. After all these years of service, you do this to me. And Laban says, it is not our custom to marry the uh, youngest before we marry the oldest. And so he says, I don't care. I'll work another seven years. I just gotta have me some Rachel. Uh, so he works another seven years. He makes it clear 
that he loves Rachel, but he hated Leah. Yes. But the Bible tells us in verse 31 that when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, can I stop right there and tell you that God sees all and he knows all. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been hated, where you have been abused? where you've been neglected and overlooked uh, and you felt like God didn't see you. I come to tell you that not only does God see, uh, but God knows. And when God gets ready, he has the power to step into your situation and turn it around. I'm so glad that I serve a God that's on the side of the oppressor. I serve a God that's on the side of the poor. I serve a God that's on the side of the abuser. I serve a God that's on the side of people that everybody else turns away from. And so in God seeing the hatred, he does something amazing. In verse 21, it says he opened up her womb. But he allowed Rachel to be barren. He says, my gift to you for the things that you've gone through, my gift to you for the rejection that you have experienced from your husband is to make you productive and to make you fruitful. I'm here to tell you that rejection hurts. Have you ever been rejected before? Yeah. You love somebody that didn't love you like you love them. Yeah. And sometimes the people that you expect to love you the most are the main ones that won't love you. Or oh, you won't talk to me, but it's just yeah. you anyhow. Yeah. I want you to know that God can take that rejection situation. Yeah. God can take people turning their back on you, yeah. and he can use it for your good. Yeah. What God would do is he would take situations where people have rejected you, where people hate you versus loving you, yeah. and he will release gifts to you. Yeah. He will release things yeah. into your life that make you stand out uh, despite the fact that you have been rejected. Yeah. Can I tell you today that many people who have been rejected, who have been hurt, who are hated, are also some of the most gifted people you would ever meet. Yeah. Oh, come on. If some of you can tell the truth, you were rejected. You wasn't the favorite child because you was too dark. You wasn't liked because your daddy wasn't the one that your mama liked. You wasn't liked because of things that happened in your family that you had nothing to do with. But look at yourself. You're so gifted. You're so beautiful. You can do anything. Some of you, I give you something. You can do anything with your hands. You're just good with your hands. And some of you are good at making hair and fixing hair. And some of you are good at cooking. And some of you are good with organizing things. You're so gifted. You're so talented. Despite the hatred, God still gave you gifts. Despite the rejection, God still uses you. I wish I had a hundred people up in this place today that could testify that despite the rejection, God has given me some gifts. And God is using my life. Let me hear you holler. I'm a gift and rejected people. Bless the Lord in this house today. Hate it, but gifted. Rejected but anointed. God God specializes in doing that to the hated. But here is the challenge. When you are gifted and anointed, even your haters will have use for you. Even the ones that reject you will use you. They will be up in your face. They don't want you. They just want what you got. They don't want you. They just want what you can do for them. And God said, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. For people that don't want you but want your stuff. Huh? Don't want you but want your food. Huh? Don't want you but want your money. Huh? Don't want you but want something from you. Huh? And don't intend to ever give you what you're really looking for. And that's acceptance. Jacob sleeps with Leah over and over and over again. He don't like her. He hates her, but he sure he's going to get some. Yeah. <laughs> now you might be saying, Pastor, why are you talking about sex on Sunday morning? It's bigger than sex. You might not be having sex, but how many people are you letting uh, abuse you and use you over and over and over and over and over again? And you know they don't mean no good by you. The Bible tells us in chapter 29, verses 32 to 35, that Leah keeps conceiving with Jacob. Why is he going to Leah? Because Rachel can't produce no children. So it didn't matter how much Jacob loved Rachel. If she couldn't have no children, she wasn't useful. And even though he hated Leah, she was useful. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place. There's some people in your life, they can't stand you, but they know they need you. Huh? On your job, they wish you were quick. 
But they know if you left that job, that job would fall apart. There's some people around you in your community that wish that you would move out of your complex, move out of your apartment. But the truth of the matter is that you living there has protected that place because you have come into grace on your life. And because the blood of Jesus is on your life, it's been blocking back destruction from that complex. And they know they need you there. Hate you, but they need you. Don't like you, but they have to have you around. I don't know who I'm talking to in this place today. God says, I'm speaking to you. Uh, yes, you're being hated, rejected, uh, yes. not understood, misunderstood, understood, yes. but then played. God says, don't worry because I have the power yes. to give you something yes. that still make your haters have to need you. Hey, yes. yes. you want to there because you still need me. Uh, talk about me like a dog, but you're going to come ask me for my help because you know I got the goods. You ought to touch me people that I got the goods. Uh, you know what I like that I got the goods. Uh, you might despise me, but I got something that you need. But here's the danger. When you fool with somebody that hates you but needs you. It, 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 it becomes a dangerous cycle. It's more than a love-hate. This becomes abusive. It's abuse. Abuse. When you deal with a person that hates you but use you, I want to tell you, beloved, that it's not love. It's not even love hate. It's abusive. And many of God's people are in abusive relationships that might not be punching you with their hands or stopping you down. But for them to demonstrate to you that they hate you, but they turn around and use you for what they need, that is abusive. And God has sent me here to sound an alarm to God's people. That if you are in an abusive relationship, God says it's time to come out. Because it's time for you to recognize your value in him. It's time for you to recognize the gifts that he's giving you. And he wants you to be preserved. Tell somebody, I am valuable. Oh, come on, say it like you mean, I'm valuable. I ain't gonna let no rascal, nobody come up in here and treat me like I'm a dog because I am a son of God. I am an heir of salvation. I am the apple of his eye. I am written in the palm of his head. And if you can't keep up what God knows about me, then you need to hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back. No. I heard God say he's going to break some soul ties today. Well, I've been there. Keep going back to vomits. Every time you go back, you remember why you left her. Every time you go back, you remember why you left that nigga alone. Huh? But every time you get that feeling in your belly, you forget. Huh? And you start warning them. And then you go tell them over your house. And as soon as they step in your house and sit down, I wish you go home. I don't know why I have to do it. It's a summertime that has to be broken. Gotta be broken. Gotta be broken. You don't even like them, but you still call them. It's not true, it's a spirit. Gotta be broken. The danger with this type of cycle is that you would do anything almost. Uh -huh. Just to convince them to love you. You will do stuff that you don't even want to do. It's just what I got to do to get him to love me. I'll do it. It's against my beliefs. It's against my religion. It's against my conviction. But I love this man. I love this woman so much. I'm willing to do whatever just to convince them to love me, to validate me, to affirm me. And God told me to tell you that that person never will give you what you want. Because they know they can treat you however they want. And then you're going to always change your story. Oh, don't feel bad if I'm talking about you. I've been there plenty of times. So I ain't judging you. I'm just telling you what I know from experience. That God has the power to break soul ties. And you see that woman, you want to look at her. Hey, you keep moving. Don't feel that Call you on the phone, delete, delete, block, 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 ignore, ignore, ignore. You mentioned that. You mentioned that. So Leah is having all these children. The man hates.
Peter, but she's still sleeping with him, and she's getting results. She's producing sons, not just daughters. She's producing sons, which was the premium of the day. And if you had sons, you had property, you had inheritance, you could have wealth. She's producing even though the man hated her. Some of you all want to know why you keep producing? You want to know why you have favor, unusual favor? It's because God has seen that in your life you have been around people that hated you and rejected you yeah. and misused you. So his gift to you was to give you unusual favor. Right you to be productive. Right Look back down through your life. Why is it that you always made it over? Yeah. Your friends didn't make it and they got it less stuff than you did and you still here and they're gone. Why? Right. Because God looked and he saw that you was hated. Yeah. Your mama hated you. Yeah. Your daddy hated you. Your siblings hated you. You're not saying nothing. Huh? Your friends said they loved you but they hated you. Yeah. God said, I saw it so I made you fruitful. Hallelujah. Yeah. So your gift is not so you can walk around and parade it and lord other other people. Your gifts have been given to you so that you can help other people that's hated. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> All right. Amen. So Jacob is sleeping with Leah. Hazel, uh -huh. she's producing. God said, if you keep fooling with a person that you know hates you, then you really need to check yourself more than them. They are being consistent. But are you? God says we have to check our motives and our perspective. God opened Leah's womb to show her favor despite her condition. But versus praising God for what he did, she said, I'm going to use this to get what I want. God says, some of you all are using your gift not to praise God, not to advance the kingdom, but you're using your gift to manipulate someone to do something that you want who never will do it. And as a result, you keep getting hurt, you keep getting wounded, and now the hurt and the pain becomes bitterness and resentment because the motive is wrong. Your perspective of yourself is off. If God loves you enough to give you gifts, yeah. then why do you have to plead with someone to see your value? Right. If you have to beg and plead with somebody to see who you really are and to see the fullness and the greatness of who you are, then you don't have a proper perspective of yourself. For God to give you gifts that gets results, that speaks of the great value that you have and the great person that you are, and how important you are to God. And if God, who is infinite and divine, knows I'm important, yeah. why am I going to waste my time trying to convince a person of my value? God is saying many of you all are hurting yourselves yes. because your motives and your perspectives are off. Very my God, my God. Oh. But there's a solution. Beyond soul ties, breaking them, there's another solution. In verse 35, as I finish, she conceived again and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah, and she left off bearing. I want you to know that praise is your solution. Yes, it is. When you are around people that reject you and hate you but use you, it forces you to take your eyes off people and put your praise and your attention on a God who loves you enough to give you something in the midst of your terrible situation. I want you to notice that praise is birthed out of rejection. I'm telling you, when you can look back on what you have been through mm -hmm. and realize that God has been with you all along, yeah. that it is God who has brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light, yeah. that it was God that spared you for stuff. Some of you all grew up rough. Let's just be honest. Yeah. You grew up rough. 
There's all kinds of stuff that should have happened to you. But God protected you even as a child. He covered you and he spared you. And even the things that you did go through, it didn't destroy you because you're here today. He said, well, you can look at what you've been through. And you can see that God has gifted you. And he has anointed you. And he has spared you. Then you begin to praise him in the middle of your haters. He said, if you can praise me in the middle of your haters, huh? If you can praise me in the middle of your rejectors, yes, huh? if you can praise me in the middle of people that want to use you, uh, not only when I push them back out of your life, uh, but I'll heal you where you've been hurt. Uh. I'll heal you where you've been scarred. Uh. I'll heal you where you've been cut. Uh. If you can praise me uh, and I praise a Negro, uh. if you can praise me and I praise a Jack, uh. if you can praise me and not get caught up in the bitterness of your pain. God says, I will break the chains in your life. I'll shift your perspective. Hallelujah. I'll realign your motives. I'll heal you from your scars. Notice as I finish. After she prays, the scripture says she left buried. She had no more children at that Why? When she realized that this was a vicious, dangerous cycle through her praise, God broke the cycle. Some of you all think that just because you're producing in the middle of a mess, it means that God is pleased. Not so. He gave you the gift, but he's not pleased with the cycle that you're in. So what he does is he keeps letting you produce, Come on. not as a sign that he agrees, but as a sign to get your attention to say this isn't right. Yes. Yes. Something has to change. See, some of you think it's a blessing, but God's not going to bless mess. You think God's blessing you, and you know your relationship is a mess. God's not blessing that. He's trying to get your attention. And say, recognize that this is not what I set up for you. So until you recognize that I am not pleased with what's happening, I'm going to keep letting you have babies. Lay down with a person that hates you. Emotionless sex. Nothing worse than it. Emotionless friendship. Emotionless connection. She's a sedan. When are you going to get tired of the detachment and something that's supposed to be connected? And when you get tired of it, God says, I'll break the cycle. Break it! Yes, What I love about the story is this. She had kids again. But this time, she realized that she wasn't going to use these kids to get no man. She was going to use these kids to establish her legacy. She's going to use these kids to establish her purpose. God says, he's not giving you productivity as a sign of blessing if it's in a mess. He's giving you productivity as a sign that you need deliverance. It's the same way that when you sin and you get by. You know, I got by this time because God forgave me. I didn't get caught. That's not a sign that God's pleased. That's God's telling you, get your life together. But we take it as sloppy grace to mean that we can slip and slide, but I didn't get caught this time. I didn't get, I didn't get caught, so I mean, God is okay with me. No, God is saying, I love you enough to give you another opportunity to get it right. My prayer for you today is that you would love yourself enough to not be connected to people that hate you but need you. Have no problem using you. Eat up all your food. Take all your gas money. 
that's up your bed. You just made it up now. I ain't heard from you in two weeks now. You're gonna come over. I don't know if you thought. I just want to watch TV. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You are valuable. Lay your hands on your chest and say, I'm valuable. <laughs> and let me right now stand in prostate for anyone in your life who has hated you, who has rejected you, who have abused you. And I want you to forgive me. I apologize for the hurt, for the abuse for the rejection. Please forgive me. I stand in process for that person. Yes, sir. And I want you to forgive me. Yeah. It first starts with forgiveness. Yes, sir. You have to let the people go. And you have to forgive yourself. Because sometimes we feel like such a fool. Yes, sir. We feel like that's what we deserve. No, you don't. No way. No, you don't. You don't deserve anything but God's best. God's best. Amen. If you know that a lot of physical illness is connected to emotional, yes. Come here, brothers and sisters. Connected to emotional. Yes. 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 Amen. Let's welcome brothers and sisters. Please. Come Amen. Back. She can testify to it that it's a lot of physical sickness that manifests itself in physical pain, mental pain. A lot of people have mental illness. They didn't start off that way. It was because of stuff that's happened to them, said to them, done to them over the years that they were processed. That God wants to heal today. So first, we open the doors to the church, come for the deacons. 